is Jesus in verse 27. He's got all this stuff that's going on. There are people blaming him. There are religious people saying he was blaspheming. There were religious people saying he is of the devil. And there are other people say that he was a prophet. There was other people saying that he was the resurrected Elijah that had come back. There were people all over. There were people that would say to him, uh, is there anything good that comes out of Nazareth? I mean, think about that. Is there anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, and, and, and yet he had, he had men that were following him uh, that were, some of them were, were tax collectors. Some of them uh, had really bad tempers. Anybody here have a friend that has a real bad temper? Of course, I see Nam back there. Yeah. <clears throat> He had one that uh, 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 oftentimes wanted to see miracles. He had a thief among him that, that likes to be around money. Okay? And uh, he had all kinds of men and women. Uh, there, yet he was born into uh, a place called Bethlehem. And he would, didn't even have a normal hotel room. He was actually born in a barn. Uh, and, and yet wise men came and searched him out and gave him. And so between uh, being a man that was worshipped or God that was worshipped by wise men and people would lay down gold and gifts at his feet, he was on the other side, uh, people would call him Beelzebub next to the devil. And so there was a lot of trouble that was surrounding Christ uh, besides that he was not yet even crucified. And, and you see the story that Jesus was crucified and he was, uh, his beard was plucked out and, and they gave him lashes upon his back and, and a crown of thorns upon his head. Uh, his own disciples ran away from him. His own disciple Peter who said that, Lord, I'll die. I'll never deny you. But he denied denied him. Not once, not twice, but three times. And, 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 and the only disciple that was at the foot of the cross was John. That's amazing to me. There was troubles. And maybe that's uh, sometimes in our life. We, we feel like we have so much trouble. Anybody here has ever had so much trouble that you feel like you don't want anymore? He says that now my soul is troubled. He didn't say my body. He didn't say my family. He didn't say uh, uh, my, my business. He didn't say my money. He said my, my, my soul, that, that part of you that you can control. Uh, your soul is made up of three parts. Uh, anybody here has ever taken my discipleship course that your soul is made of three parts? It is the life essence of where your spirit and your soulish man live. It is the mind, your will, uh, and your emotions where you are happy, you are sad. It is also uh, the place where you think. So it's your mind, your will, and your emotions. It is your reasoning process. And so this is the area that Christ was troubled. He didn't say, you know what, I'm in trouble because of all these people talking about me. I'm in trouble because, all no, he said that it, within me there was a turmoil. Within me there is a turmoil. Brothers and sisters, oftentimes when trouble comes into your life, it doesn't really attack you. Those things that you see on the outward is actually trying to get inward. It is where you are the battle of the mind. It is your soul that's battling. Have you ever had to make decisions that you didn't know to move left or right or even stay still? I've been there. Uh, have you ever been in a place where uh, uh, your mind is so troubled that it, uh, you are almost paralyzed uh, to uh, that trouble? See, you have to understand, brothers and sisters, that the outward of things are trying to get inward into you. Because if it can trouble your mind, it will begin to trouble your decision. It is when you can trouble your mind, it will begin to trouble your rationality and your thinking. It tries to mess you up. Have you ever had a, a, a person that was so troubled that they did not even have common reason? Have you ever been in that place? Or have you ever had a uh, uh, know someone or even yourself that uh, uh, because of so many troubles trying to get into your life that even the choices you make was out of character? Oh, I've made some choices. My will, I didn't want to do that, but I did that. That was Peter, the apostle, not Peter, 
our friend, our, our, our pastor, our, our brother, not, not Peter Gore, but I'm talking about people, uh, Peter uh, the Petra, the, the rock, Peter the rock uh, in the Bible. That was him. He was so troubled by seeing the Savior get uh, 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 persecuted and prosecuted and beaten that when people say, I know you, man. Aren't you in God? I know you. You walk with that man named Jesus from Nazareth. No, I don't know him. Yes, you do. I, I've seen him when you, you were there when he fed the 5,000 with the two fish and the five loaves. Uh, weren't you there when, when, when uh, he would cast out demons? Oh, I know. No, I don't. That's not me. Weren't you there when he fed the seven? No, 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 that wasn't me. He was so troubled that even in his mind, he knew that Christ was real because God told him, Jesus said, Peter, flesh and, not, and blood did not reveal this to you. My Father God above revealed to you that I am the Messiah. Wow! A man that is so spiritual like Peter that Jesus says to him, flesh and blood did not reveal the truth to you. My Father did. Brothers and sisters, there are troubles that could cause us to make uh, unwise choices. Our will could be uh, modified. Our will could be all messed up. It is not the things that come out uh, or the things that of this world affects. It's trying to affect your soul because if it can get your soul all messed up, your emotion be all messed up. You ever seen people that is all, they've gone through so much trouble, we would say like this, they're an emotional wreck. It's worse than the Titanic. Have you seen it? I've seen people that are so emotional that they are, they, you can't talk to them. You, they, they make no sense. I've seen people in so much pain that they were begin to speak gibberish to you. That their mind, we, we sometimes call that a nervous breakdown. Brothers and sisters, uh, the enemy is always trying to control your soul. It is always trying to control your mind. It is always trying to control your will, and it will always try to control your emotion. Did you know that when you deal with people that have been demonized, uh, the demons don't actually live in their bones. They actually live in their soul. Oh, see, uh, I've had to deal with these and deliver people out of these kind of circumstances. And what you realize is because somewhere along the line, they have uh, left a gate open and so their, uh, so their soul be troubled. But Jesus says that while my soul is troubled, he, he asks a question, shall I say then, Father, save me from this time? See, oftentimes we as Christian we don't like trouble. Who likes trouble? I don't like trouble. Get trouble out of my house. <laughs> you know, there's a song that used to say, oh, what was that song? Go, uh, or there's a saying, goes, here comes trouble. Uh, I don't like it when people say to me, no, I don't want trouble. Get out of my house. Get out of my marriage. Get out of my children. Get out of my church. I don't like trouble. I don't welcome trouble. I'm not looking for trouble. I need to have a t-shirt that says, I'm anti-trouble. <laughs> Right? But Jesus says that my soul is troubled because it's the things that people are trying to stir up. And he says, what shall I say? He's asking a question. There's a question mark there. Maybe that's you and me. Is, are there things that's happening in your life that troubles you? Hmm. Are there people talking? Are, are there situations and circumstances that are troubling you? I, I, I have to admit there are times where things trouble me. Uh, often enough that it causes my emotion to not be as it should. Uh, oftentimes, uh, my trouble would cause me to react in a certain way towards my children. And I have to apologize. I have to admit. See... All the time, the enemy is trying to bombard you with trouble. Trouble, trouble, it's coming. you got to be anti-trouble. And Jesus says that, I know there's trouble, and my, my soul is troubled, and there is a circumstance, there's storm raging, there's a hurricane in me. But he said, what shall I say then? Father, save me from this hour? He said, no. But for this purpose, I came. I want to talk to you now from purpose is greater than. See, the, the reason why Jesus was able to uh, overcome the trouble, it's because he had a greater purpose than his problem. 
Brothers and sisters, you have to get to a place in your life and that uh, while you're in the midst of your storm, you have to know that God didn't create you for this time to drop you. He didn't create you to live during 2019 with the World Wide Web and the Internet and, and, and all the social media and all the technology. If he wanted you and your talent uh, to be uh, 100, 200 years, you should have lived in 1819 when they still had horses and chariots and oil lamps. Thank God I don't live there. I couldn't survive there. People said, if you had a time machine, would you go back? No. Why would I want outdoor plumbing? No. I would go back and stay maybe an hour. Just put my, just buy IBM stock and be good forever. <laughs> Right? But, but see, what happens is we allow the trouble to be the purpose instead of our divine purpose to, over, to be greater than our trouble. Because when we focus on trouble, then that becomes our purpose. But when we focus on the plans of God in our life, then our plan that God has for our life is greater than trouble. Oh, you see, yeah. thank you. Miss Jean just gave me permission to preach it. <laughs> see, look, in Jeremiah 1, it says this, Then the word of the Lord came to me. This is Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Oh, did you know that? The reason why you look the way you look is because God knew you. The, the reason why you have the skills you have is because God knew you. The reason why you're so good at math is because he knew you. The reason why he's so good at this and that and the talents because he knew you. The reason why you are the way you are and born in this time, born in this century, born in this decade and living in this decade is because he knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. You know what? That word knew means to have personal knowledge. You know, you, have you ever hear people and say, do you know that guy? And you're like, you met him one time. Yeah, I knew him. No, you don't. <laughs> Mike's shaking his hand. But you don't really know him. Right. But to know somebody means you have spent time with them. You, you know what takes for them to click or, oh, you know, what they sound like. You, you know, that little that little a tick that they do that, uh, uh, you know, that when they get excited, their ears turn red. <laughs> do, do you know somebody, you, you know, them when they uh, they are uncomfortable about something, you know them when they are at their worst and at their best. And God says that I knew you. I knew how you are. I know the way you will be. I know what, how you would react. Be, I know the intellect you have, the skill. I know you like music. I know you don't like this, that. I, I know because I know you because I have sanctified you for a greater purpose. And your purpose is greater than what you will go through. Because the Bible says that I would never put you into things more than you can Handle And so but instead of focusing on the trouble, in, instead of focusing on what is not working, the, you are putting that trouble and things that is not working as your purpose. And God says, no, no, my purpose in your life is greater than what's not working. Amen. See, the problem, and I, I deal with this, and this message for me, it, it doesn't matter if you listen, I'm speaking to myself because God obviously gave it to me. And look, and he says in Psalms 139, I love this, for you formed my inner parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows. He said my what? He said what? He didn't say my hands know. He didn't say my money knows. He didn't say my trouble knows. He didn't say my tribulation knows. He didn't say things that don't work know. He didn't say that my marriage knows. He didn't say my children know. He goes, no, that my soul knows well, very well. Oh, brothers and sisters, in another version, it says, you knitted my inward parts. Wow. 
Now, now, I, I know there's a very good knitter in our church. She had a life group, crochet group. And, and when you knit things together and you do it right, it doesn't unravel very easy, does it, no. Miss Jean? It, it, when you knit it together, there is a, a, a beauty, a pattern. Uh, when you look at it, uh, uh, the people that are expert at knitting and, and crocheting and making these beautiful things, they can look at a person if they, if they make the, the things right or wrong and, and, and uh, the separation of the thread is far or short or this is too thick or too thin. And they, they look at it. But the, the Bible says that for God knitted my inner parts. He put you together. So if he put you together, he knows what you're about. Amen. See, the problem is we make trouble the purpose instead of the purpose that's greater than. Right. See, he, you're greater than your purpose. What's your purpose? You're like, Pastor, what's my purpose? Has anybody ever asked that? God, what's my purpose? Love God and love people. Wow, that was easy. You know, I, I, I'm glad that there wasn't, uh, we didn't have to, uh, Jesus made it simple because actually according to Jewish law, they had over 630 something laws. Could you imagine trying to memorize 600 and something laws? I can barely memorize 10. And yet Jesus says that if you love me, love God, that's what he's saying. He said, love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and all your soul. If you do that, that's the first great commandment. And the second one is love your neighbor as yourself. If you do those, you have kept all of the law of the prophets. Wow, that's easy. So what's my purpose? To love God with all my strength. Do we love God with all of our strength? It's like, how do you do that? How do you love God with all your strength? Have you ever thought of that? You're going to ask me, Pastor, you're going to answer that? Have you, you know, when you, has anybody here ever played sports? I'm talking about competitive sports against other opponents, okay? Have you ever had your coach, have you ever been coached, and the coach says to you, and the, all the sports people would understand this analogy, and the coach says when you step on the court, you leave it on the court. You give it all. You know, my daughters all play competitive sports, all of them. And they say, Daddy, I want to give my best. How would I know? I said, when you get on the court, you gave it all. That means you didn't hold back. That means you, you did the best that you can do. That's excellence. See, when we love God with all our strength, that means we gave it our all. We, we don't leave nothing. That at the end, when we're, when we're 100 years old, we don't look back and say, boy, I wish I lived God, for God more. No, I don't want to live like that. I want to give it all. That when I'm preaching, I want to give it all. When I'm teaching, I want to give it all. When I'm praying, I want to, when I'm worshiping, I want to give it all. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Because it's too easy to say, ah, it's just Sunday. See, when you love God with all your strength, you give it all. Do you give it all with your money? Do you give it all with your prayer? Do you love people with your all? Amen. It's easy to love people that look like you, smell like you, like you. It's easy. It's hard to love people that don't smell like you, look like you, talk like you, and don't like you. <laughs> it's hard to people when they say, I really don't like you. Well, I, I love you. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard when you, yeah, if you've been married and your spouse is not acting right, to love them. <laughs> with all your strength, with all your mind, that means, you know, I love it when he said, love God, all your strength, all your mind, you know what that means? Most people that are very rational outside, they come to church, they lose all common sense. I'm like, hello, what happened? We need that common sense in the church too, Right? They just do some silly stuff, foolish stuff. I'm not, you know what? Being a Christian, you shouldn't be foolish. You shouldn't be, duh. We need your intellect. We need your ability. But uh, don't allow your intellect, your rationality, your common sense to supersede faith. Because there are some things that your mind and your rationale cannot 
understand because it only can be understood by the Spirit. I love what Dr. James Tour says, the professor at Rice. He said, there's a lot of things that science can't explain faith, but I'm a man of faith. He's actually a Christian, but yet he was raised as a Jew. I think Sarah and Michael's probably taking his organic chemistry class. Okay? So there's a lot of things. We, we need your intellect. We need your mind with all your strength, with all your mind, with all your soul. When you come to God, be passionate. Be passionate about God. Be passionate. You know, passion. Yes. You know, I often talk to young men about this. And they say, Pastor, you know, I'm looking at single young men. I'm looking to get married and all that. He goes, what do you think women look? I'd say women look for men that are passionate, that really go all out for what they believe. You don't want to, does any woman here, maybe I'm, I could be wrong, does any woman here want a man that's kind of like, eh, <laughs> lackadaisical, <laughs> indifferent, have no emotion, no, pain, no passion, don't stand for anything? <laughs> There's an old saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand for faith, stand. I, I listened to a personal video of a, a future Hall of Fame quarterback to just this today or yesterday. I was so excited, and he plays for a, a, a state right next to ours. Okay, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's a Super Bowl winner, and he's a man of faith. And he encouraged children to bring their Bibles to school. Yes, yes. And you know what? I'm glad he's a Texan. He was born and raised in Austin. That's right. And he got, and he said, look, I live by two simple things. Love God with all of my strength, all of my heart, my mind. He goes, that, that first commandment is self-explanatory. I'm just paraphrasing. You can look it up. He plays for a team there that makes the best gumbo in the world. And the second one, he says to love your neighbor as yourself. And he goes, what does that mean? To respect people regardless. Accept them and love them. You know, that, that to me, he had trouble because people were criticizing him and saying that he, he's anti, he's standing up and he's trying to. No, when you have trouble, def, redefine your purpose. Because when you begin to focus on your purpose, then your purpose is greater than your purpose. Yeah. Yeah. What is your purpose? What is your purpose? Look at your neighbor. What's your purpose? Love God. Love people. You know what? Figure out what God has called you to do. If you're a great cook, cook for somebody. If you're, if you, uh, you know, I found out there was a young lady here who loves to be active. She'd love to be in sports, love to do out there. I said, man, it'd be awesome for you to get people out of their uh, uh, sofas and move. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Why not? There could be anything that whatever you are passionate about, God has given you that platform to speak the truth into people's lives. Then you become, your purpose become greater than the gossip. Your purpose will be greater than your limitation. Your purpose then will be greater than the trouble. Your purpose then will be greater than the people talk bad about you, hate you. Uh, you'll, you'll have haters all your life, but that's okay. You don't have to drink their haterade. They can hate all they want. Drink your own haterade. I got enough. Purpose will always be greater if you focus on what God has given you. See, brothers and sisters, my purpose, I was telling, you know, I was teaching Next Steps class. If you're interested in that, it allows you to understand our vision, all that. Next Steps class, and I was telling, I said, you know what I feel like as a pastor that I'm supposed to do? is to give people opportunity to be blessed. Because the Bible says that we can boldly go before the throne of grace. And I don't want to be the guy standing, hey, hey, you can't get there. No, no, no. You don't have the right clothes on. Girl, you're wearing too much makeup. Girl, you, man, you're... No. I'm supposed to be the one to say, if you don't know the way, come here. 
Let me show you. God didn't say that you had to be perfect. He said that go boldly before the throne of grace. It didn't matter what you are, what you look like, where you come from, how you were raised, how many troubles you've had, how many messed up relationships you've been in. He was saying that you could boldly become, come before my throne of grace. And who am I to try to block them and tell them they can't? I'm supposed to say, come on, come on, let me just, come on. I'm going to drag you if I have to, because I want you to be blessed. Amen. You know, my wife said something to me. And there are people out there that's very intolerant of, of us as Christians. But what we want is just for people to be saved and be happy. And yet they hate us. But all we want you to do is know the love of Christ so that he can bless you and love you and give you eternity with him. What's so bad about that? I thought, wow, that's a lot of wisdom in that. And yet they want us to, they want to hate us. Why? I'm trying to help you. Why are you hating me? Don't hate me, hate the game. I'm not in the game. Brothers and sisters, I don't know. Maybe your trouble is very little compared to somebody else. You know, trouble is very relative. You know, my kids, they think they have troubles. <laughs> <laughs> right? But their trouble to them is pretty big. But then compared to my troubles, it's very, very small. Right? But the, the reason why is because the Bible says that to much is given, much is required. Because, because, because of where I am, there is more requirement. And when you have more requirement, there could be more troubles. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but if we focus on the trouble and not the purpose, then the trouble becomes our purpose. But if we focus on the purpose that God has given us, then our purpose will always be greater than. Amen. Greater than. Greater than my past. Greater than what I used to be. Greater than my past addiction. Greater than my sickness. Greater than my decisions that I made in distress. Uh, greater than what people said. My past is not my future. My purpose in Christ is greater than. Greater than. But the problem is we get tied up in a place called trouble. We get bound up. Hey, I know we made mistakes. Who don't? Who hasn't? But stop getting bound up and shackled by trouble, trouble, trouble. I'm anti-trouble. We got to get to a place where our purpose begins to give us the direction, the passion of our life. You know that when you're passionate about something, you can go without eating. You ever see kids play? They're passionate about playing. It's time to eat. Oh, it's okay, mama. I'm not, you see, you're so passionate about playing, you forget to eat. I used to. See, when you get so passionate in God, when you get so passionate to love people, you don't care what you eat. You don't care if you eat. You know, I, I've been to churches that their purpose was about the food and not the people. They were more interested if the food is good. I'm not interested if the food is good. I'm just glad there's food. I'm interested if the people are good. Yes. Amen. Yeah, yeah. See, you can eat anything. We live in America. There's, there's McDonald's and restaurants on every corner. There could be three. I've been to Northwest. There's like four coffee shops on one street in the same corner. You're not missing anything. Our purpose can't be about things. It has to be about people. You know, I love when he sang that song, Jesus, I love you more than anything. anything. See, I love you more than anything. It has to be more than about things. I'll leave you this verse, 2 Corinthians 4, 15. Is this okay with everybody? Yes. Say to your neighbor, purpose is greater than. 
I want you to say, my purpose is greater than my trouble. My purpose is greater than my troubles. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, 15 and 18. This is some of my favorite verses when I was going through some things. And this is one of my, I preached out of this uh, sermon um, because in the King, King James, I preached, this is one of my but sermons, B-U-T sermons. I got a few of them. But this is one of my but sermons that I've preached. But this is one of my favorite scriptures. Of course, the whole Bible is my favorite. But 2 Corinthians, especially when you're going through, this is my favorite. He says, look at what the Apostle Paul says. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many abound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though, though our outward man perish, yet the inner man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but... What? But what? But for a moment. It's but for a moment. Look at it. And then he says this. Works for us a far exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look at not the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen is temporary. But the things which are not seen is eternal. You know what he's saying? How many people have trouble here? Been through trouble. It's okay to raise your hand, y'all. <laughs> Has been through trouble. Yeah, financial trouble, marriage trouble, emotional trouble, right? Family troubles, right? Some of you don't even have trouble. Like, I got no trouble. Oh, God, <laughs> praise the Lord, brother. Pray for me. But he says this. Paul has been beaten. He has been in prison. He has been stoned. He has been shipwrecked. He's been left for dead. He's been snake bitten. He's been talked about. All right? He's had escaped by night. People who once loved him hate him, disowned him. And yet he says, of all my troubles, they're light compared to glory. Brother and sister, I want to tell you right here, compared to what? To the glory that God has abounded towards you, your trouble is light. So when he's weighing it, he said, brothers and sisters, the trouble will never outweigh your purpose. Stop, getting, stop giving trouble your pur the purpose of your life, your energy, your strength, and start getting your purpose the focus it deserves. He says, for these light afflictions would work in us a far exceeding eternal weight of glory. You know what? It's just but for a moment. When you think about the troubles that you've gone through and you're able to overcome it and God has allowed you to have glory, testimony, doesn't it feel great that you overcame? We have troubles there all around, but Jesus says that don't worry for I have overcome the world. The throne of grace is here. The throne of grace is for you. Purpose is here and purpose is for you. Let us stand. As you walk into this week, wherever your travels, your work might lead you, I want you to think on this, just this title of this sermon, what we want to talk about, purpose is greater than. When you run into somebody that's giving you opposition, per my purpose is greater than you, brother. Now, you might not have to say it to his face, but just say it in yourself. Please don't. Now, let's, let's use some wisdom. You know, when, 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 when things are standing there and trying to talk, negative about you said no 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 my purpose is greater than that negativity you can't stop me 
God told me to do this. God told me no, 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 no city ordinance, no council person, nothing. No, nothing's going to stop me from the purpose that God has laid. You know what? No sickness, no bad joints, no pain is going to stop me. No being broke is going to stop me. It's just, being broke is just but for a moment. I was in college, I remember being broke. I thought it was eternal. <laughs> but it was just for a moment. You know that? Your purpose is greater than. Brothers and sisters, our purpose is to love God with everything within us and to love our neighbors ourselves. When you love people, then you begin to allow God to use your gifts and talents to bless people. When you begin to help enough people, bless enough people, then your purpose becomes greater than what they say about you. You know what? The altar is open this afternoon. Whatever you have right now that's kind of troubling you, it could be work, it could be whatever, money, it could be relationship, it could be family. You're not getting... Maybe a family member is not getting along with you or you, you know, they have a misunderstanding. Maybe sickness is in the way. Maybe trying just to figure out what you want to do this fall. Maybe it's just say, Lord, I just want to touch from you. I want to open the altars. Please come. And those that are watching us, I want to tell you, purpose is greater than your trouble. Purpose is greater than the lack of money. Purpose is greater than your sickness. Purpose is greater than your past. Purpose is greater than the mistakes you have made. For God has a plan for you. Because He knitted you together. Surely, you didn't come to this time, in this hour, in vain. But God has a plan. As they play, please come to the altar. If you need prayer, we're here. I'll come back and close. I lift my hands in total love.